In this tutorial we will show you how to connect to the modem and upload software and option files. Start by powering on the modem and wait a few minutes while the modem boots. And after a few minutes you should have hopefully have a solid green LED green in the status and you should have amber on RX and net. The next thing is to connect the modem to the network. You can do that by using a crossover cable or a normal straight through cable. And the cables can be connected first in the modem of course, but then you can connect it to a switch or you can just connect it directly to the PC. You can verify the connection by checking the uh, LEDs in the net card and they should hopefully be green. Okay, so uh, now the modem is connected to the laptop via the Ethernet cable, so I guess uh, it's time for an IP address. Yes, we need to get some IP connectivity between the modem and the computer, so I will configure it. So I guess this is for Windows 10, but it yeah. will probably be more or less the same. It has to do with changing the adapter settings, I guess. So. Yep, so network uh, connection thing. Network sharing center and network connections. Here, and we find the LAN. The LAN connection. Properties. And IP version, version 4. 4, yeah. Yep. Properties. And so I guess when you get a out of the box modem, the, the IP address is. Uh, 192.168.0.1, right? Yeah, it will be on this network. Yeah, okay. 168.0, and you have like one. So in that case, you can choose two. Yeah. Uh, but if you get it like a pre-configured modem from us, you will have to to ask the, the help desk about the IP address and then... Yeah, because then it will actually be a public IP address, so you need to, yeah. to configure your, your network. something like uh, AD... 88 something yeah something yeah but for this this i mean this is straight out of the box this has no software on it or anything like that so i guess we we just take the next in line so we take yeah. two dot two and the sub okay out. that's okay excellent so okay. that should be fine and i guess actually if we uh we want to be on the safe side we could actually yeah exactly try to check connectivity Zero, we had two, and the modem had one. Yeah. So it's yeah. Nice. So okay. So we can ping the modem. That that's excellent. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. So now we have verified network connectivity between the laptop and the modem. Uh, so I guess it's time to start up iSight. Yes. Okay. So I will open iSight from the uh, the folder that we created in the previous video. Go into this. Folder, Remote Software and iSight, okay. and open iSight action. Double click, yeah. Okay. Now we have a blank space over here, right? Sometimes you can actually uh, find that it will have discovered the modem, but it's not always the, does yeah. that. Okay. So otherwise you would just right click and say new. And it just says the IP address is four times zero, but when we said log in, and then we simply enter the yeah. uh, the IP address. Yeah, it was 192, 168, 0, dot one. one, yeah. And then of course we need to enter the password, and uh, that should be have been provided by our service desk. Yes. Okay. Remember to uh, remove this FIPS thing because otherwise it will not won't log in. Actually. Okay. So there we are. Yeah. Okay, so that means that now we are ready to upload software yes. and the option file. Okay, so I guess it's time to upload so, some software. Yep, so we are still connected to the modem and I'll go into the configure menu and I want to say download package. So actually we, we don't upload because <laughs> this is seen from the modem's perspective, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Okay, and then I will press the button and say, oh. 
and it asks me where would I want to open and the uh, software package is actually in the same folder as, as uh, iSight's uh, program. Yeah, so we're actually now looking at the folder placed on the desktop. Yeah, and as you can see they're both called PKG package yeah. type. So I can see this is uh, this is for both uh, X3 and X5. Yeah, I Evolution see. X3 and X5, yes. Yeah. Uh, there are two different files. There's a small one here, as you can say, 40, about 47 uh, kilobytes, and uh, this less slightly bigger one here. Yeah, 9.44 yeah. meg. Yeah, that's... So uh, uh, I will start out with taking the small one. And, uh, and here it's very important to know what hop you're actually running your modem up against. Or yeah, as you can see on the uh, the file name, it says 14.0.3.5, and that means that the, mo the the hub that the modem will connect to where we put this software should also run this software version. Yeah, and that means that once we have loaded this software, this modem will be compatible only with the hub running this software. Yeah. And when we when when we talk about the option file, which we will cover a little later in this video, I guess should be created on that, a hop with the same software. Version. Yeah. Otherwise, it it'll crash and burn. Yeah. The modem won't work anymore. Okay. But uh, um, hopefully, you should get the the correct version from from the service desk. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, it depends Definitely. a bit on where which service you're running on, where the location of your your site in the world. Yeah. Okay. What version the hop runs? But again, for this uh, for this video for this test purpose, we will use uh, fourteen zero three five. So uh, okay, so we start out by uploading or downloading in this case the small the, the actually the BSP yeah. uh, file. Okay. Okay. So I can say start here and uh, and actually, no, if we want that. to to get a closer look at what's going on, we could even tell it to the modem, I guess. Yep. To be able to see what's and what's going as on. As you can see on the screen, you will also see the LEDs on the modem. What happens? But you can tell it actually, and it will actually uh, tell you with some screen messages what happens. Which is always a good idea because the software will is actually running on a timer. It doesn't tell you exactly what's going on. It's not real time data you see in the iSight software. It's, it's a timer. Mm. But by telnetting into the modem, you will actually be able to see exactly what's going on. And if there's an error or something. Yeah. Okay. Do you log on name is admin. And the password is the same that you use for, for iSight. So the one you got from that's the one provided by service desk, I guess. Yes. Alrighty. So it tells me that I'm logged in from Zero two, yeah. Okay. So if I start, and please notice also that you should, the radio button should be in don't reset. Otherwise, the modem will restart after each upload. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So I just start, and if I go back to, the, you can see actually. There we have that it. Something happens on the modem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess now we can load the. Uh, the somewhat larger packet uh, still needs to be. It still need to. <laughs> so you see the progress here, but as yeah. said before, this is actually just a bogus. This is just some timer <laughs> built into. Yeah. yeah. So uh, until these dots are finished, just start button down here, and the next open will not actually show. Yeah. So I guess things take time. Yep. Yeah. And you should be able to see the LEDs on the modem also uh, down in the corner. I guess it's the right corner actually. So so this takes some time, I guess. Yeah, they say about two minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you never know. But it can actually be a good idea to, to check this one because it has been seen that uh, over here in the eyesight, it look, everything looks okay. But actually when you uh, reboot the modem, it still has the old version of something goes wrong and, and then don't get updated. So uh, yeah, so this is a so this is a good tool for uh, for double checking really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are patient. We wait for the timer in eyesight to time out. The 
it. So I guess for the uh, the larger packet, it will take. I mean, it will take longer time, right? Yeah. Um, the whole installation process will take. Uh, yeah. At least double the time, I guess. But what we're actually getting here is like uh, the two files contains the, the modem itself actually runs a small Linux distribution. And on that top of that, there's a thing called Falcon, which is the iDirect software that's actually running in the Linux thing. Um, so that's what we actually what we are, are loading right now. It's loading these package files and unpack them. And when we have loaded both files, we have a running Linux and we have the software running in that Linux distribution. So actually when we tell that, we actually uh, log into the, the Falcon software, the iDirect software. And uh, if you actually do SSH, uh, which we will show you later in another video, you actually log into the, the Linux distribution instead. Okay. So I guess it's uh, it's it's done now. Yep. So the button is now. So we need yeah. to open the next one. So last time we opened the BSP, so now we open this RMT. And again, don't reset. And hit start. And if we open up the uh, the command prompt for the for the telnet session, we should be able to see a lot of things going on there also, I guess. Yeah. Right now, it should say something about. Yeah, it. it's really loading. Yeah. And this is a very very good way of actually seeing that something is happening with the modem. So I guess this is the part where a yeah. good cup of coffee would be would be handy. This is just waiting, right? Yes. And right now we are directly connected to the modem, but since this is actually just IP connectivity, this could also be done from remote sites if you need to upgrade your software for some reason. Or so as long as the, the site is actually up and running, you can actually upgrade the software through our site. So we could actually have done this uh, over the satellite or over the yep. air, so to speak. Yeah. So I guess we are coming up to. Is around 12 or something like yeah. 12, 11. So, okay, so now we'll start unpacking. So now it will unpack. And I think that we will come back uh, once that's done because this is just waiting and it makes no no sense just uh, looking at that unpacking. Um, so I guess we'll we'll come back once uh, the files has been unpacked. Okay, the software has been downloaded, uh, and as we can see, if I go a bit up here. Uh, you see that it's actually unpacked a lot of files that have been saved, so things seem to be okay. So last step here is that we want to uh, to load the option file. So and the option file that's the file that tells the modem the, the configuration of the modem actually. The other two files we have loaded is the software, the Linux thing, and this one is the configuration. So I would go to option file and I want to say download from disk. And I have put my I'll option file. Put it on the desktop, I believe. So it should be somewhere here. There it is. There it is. Okay. So this option file you should have received from our, our help desk. Service desk or service yeah. desk. And uh, as you can see, we have put in here the number here is the, the serial number of the modem, and they have to match. Yeah, it has to match the sticker in the back of the modem actually. And yeah. uh, uh, as you can see in the in the in the right corner, lower yes. corner, you. It matches, and actually, also, if we see in the top here of uh, of eyesight, it, it also matches, and that's a it's a very good uh, control to 
So uh, it's, check up on. it's not possible to just take any option file. If the modem dies or something, you can't just take the old option file and put it on a new spare modem. You need to have the option file from the correct. The serial edit. number needs to match. Yeah. And it's not possible either actually to, to just edit the option file and, and switch the serial number because there's also this the reach uh, thing that actually is being calculated by from the option uh, from the serial number. So we take this one, maybe say open. Yes, we like that. Okay. So now we can actually say reset, and when we do that, the uh, uh, upgrade of the, the software and the option file will then take effect. Until now, what we have loaded is just been loaded on the disk, but it's not been run, so to speak. It's not, it will be uh, inactive until the reset. So when you hit reset, we should see the LEDs uh, go off, and then the modem will, modem will come back up. So you can see here, scheduling always reboot. Yeah. So I'll probably lose connection in a few seconds, yes. And also the LEDs went off. Yeah, the LED went went off. So. Okay. So the next thing I can do is, since I know that in the option file, the new IP address actually that the modem gets. I change the. So now we will change to the public IP address that the modem will have received, so to speak, via the. Uh, yeah, the option file. Yes. I know that isn't. It will get nine, one ninety three. So I just take one ninety four. And again, you should have received these informations uh, from our service desk. What uh, what network your modem will be on? What IP you're using? Okay. So if I like. Okay. As you can see, on the modem is not up yet. It's not until. No, we still see uh, going through the uh, initial startup, so to speak. And if we have connected this modem with a serial cable instead of uh, having just an IP connection, we will actually be able to see the startup sequence. But right now, we are just assuming that everything is okay. Yeah, we'll probably make a video on how to. Yeah. It will be the serial. next uh, one of the videos. Will be that uh, if something happens in this upgraded software, uh, maybe the only way to solve the problem to do an emergency rescue is to to connect it with a serial cable and uh, see what happens and eventually upgrade the software from from the Linux shell instead of doing it by eyesight. So now, hopefully, the Ethernet interface should. Come online. See the LEDs are where they're supposed to be. Yep, there we are. And there we go. So now the modem is actually ready to be put to the antenna. Oh, I'll just do like this. So. There we go. Very good. And you should actually also be able to see, for instance, right now we can't see that. So I guess the next step for us would be to install this together with the antenna and start doing some pointing. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be...